In the aftermath of the war between Avengers and X-Men, the words of Scott Summers have had a rather strong effect on Captain America. Realizing he has not done enough for the mutant cause in the past, and wanting to further integrate mutants into the Avengers, Captain America creates a Unity Squad led by Cyclops' brother, Havoc. The Unity Squad, referred to as the Uncanny Avengers in the comics, consists of Thor, Wolverine, Rogue, Scarlet Witch, Wasp, Sunfire, and Wonder Man. Havoc's team faced its first major opposition in the form of the Red Skull. After stealing the corpse of the recently deceased Professor X, the Red Skull uses Xavier's brain to gain his vast and legendary telepathic abilities. Starting an anti-mutant riot in New York City, the Red Skull is eventually defeated by the Unity Squad. However, he manages to escape. The Red Skull disappears for some time as Captain America and the Unity Squad are forced to instead deal with other threats. In the meantime, the Red Skull has been planning. As the Uncanny Avengers deal with the fallout of their recent confrontation with Kang the Conqueror, the Red Skull looks on and prepares for war. Captain America's enemy, Armin Zola, is to use an army of mutates to attack the Avengers, while the Red Skull orders his elite guard of S-Men to take out specific targets in the X-Men ranks. Meanwhile, the Red Skull has appropriated the fallen mutant nation of Genosha and plans to use it as a death camp for his war against X-Men and Avengers. In recent events, Havoc has been brutally disfigured from a confrontation with Kang the Conqueror. As he buys groceries at a local store, he remarks on the terrified look on people's faces in reaction to his injuries. In a dark alleyway, he is attacked by an unseen figure. We then cut to the Avengers Mansion. Wolverine, Rogue, and Scarlet Witch discuss the mistakes they have made as Avengers. Wolverine says they all must work together now if they are going to be able to defeat the Red Skull. As he leaves to take care of some personal business, he tells Rogue that she must be strong, and he is sure she will be able to deal with having Simon Williams, who is also known as Wonder Man, trapped inside her body. After Wolverine leaves, Rogue returns to the mansion and mourns the loss of Charles Xavier. Soon, she realizes something is wrong and is attacked by the S-Men. Rogue then encounters a ghostly visage of Professor X's remains. He explains he is the last little bit of Professor X's personality, struggling to hold off giving his full power to the Red Skull. He tells Rogue that she is the only one who can stop the Red Skull because he is unaware that Wonder Man exists within her. She wakes up in a Genosian death camp and frees Scarlet Witch and Havoc. They soon find Magneto, who they also break free. However, their victory is short-lived, as they are soon confronted by a confident Red Skull and his minions. The Red Skull has Havoc, Rogue, and the Scarlet Witch trapped using his telepathy. The Red Skull taunts Magneto for continuing to hide beneath his helmet and accuses Eric of using the telepathic protection to hide his own lack of morality. The Red Skull comments on how important the Scarlet Witch is for the Skull's plans, how much she hates her father, and how easy it will be to manipulate her using his new telepathic abilities. The Nazi forces Magneto to his knees and demands he beg for his daughter to be spared, but Magneto manages to use his powers to injure the Red Skull. The other mutants awake free from the villain's hold. A fight soon erupts between them and the S-Men. Scarlet Witch and Magneto regroup, and she suggests that they find the X-Men for support. But they soon discover a lab using mutants as test subjects. As Scarlet Witch comments on the fear she has of her father and the complicated feelings around him, Magneto becomes enraged at the sight of the mutants. He declares, I am no helpless child, no feeble old man. I am Magneto and proceeds to crush the S-Men in a swarm of metal. Though Scarlet Witch and Havoc attempt to stop him, Magneto incapacitates them both and begins to savagely beat the Red Skull. Picking up a large rock, Magneto calmly walks over to the Red Skull and, without saying a word, crushes his head. Rogue sees what Magneto has done and chastises the man. However, they soon hear a voice and are knocked back by an ungodly power. The voice says that Magneto did not kill Evil Incarnate. He unleashed an onslaught of it. Begins in the skies above Los Angeles. 
the Avengers descend on the city, looking to confront man-eating plants reported in the area. The Avengers are confronted by the Plant Man, who is responsible for the attack. Though the Avengers begin to fight Plant Man, Thor and Captain America soon get in a fight and the Avengers begin to turn on one another, with the exception of Iron Man. While Plant Man is confused by the Avengers actions, Iron Man quickly takes him down before being savagely attacked by the Hulk. Realizing the Avengers are under telepathic attack, Iron Man unleashes a wave of energy to counteract the telepathic frequencies. The Avengers quickly return to normal while Tony is contacted by a depowered Steve Rogers. Tony is informed that the entire world has just erupted in riots and that everyone is being affected by this telepathy. Steve then realizes who is responsible. Meanwhile, Havoc is in bed with Wasp and their child when he encounters the remains of Professor X. Remembering his daughter no longer exists due to an earlier incident with time travel, Havoc is taunted by a vision of the Red Skull before realizing he is still at the Red Skull's death camp on Genosha. The Red Skull begins to affect Havoc's mind, while Rogue, Magneto and Scarlet Witch battle the newly unleashed Red Onslaught. The villain takes control of the Scarlet Witch, while Magneto is attacked by a mind-controlled Havoc. Knocked away from the fight, Magneto finds Quentin Quire, Cyclops, and Genesis and quickly frees them, explaining the situation. However, Havoc finds them and attacks his brothers before Genesis stops him. The Young Apocalypse says that all mutants do is fight and that they need to work together to defeat the Red Skull. Suddenly, Genesis is impaled by the Red Skull's minion, Ahab. Back at the Avengers Tower, the situation around the world looks grim. Spider-Man and a team are trying to stop rioting in Midtown, while superheroes all over the world struggle to keep the peace. To make matters worse, governments are being affected too, and every nuclear power on the planet is preparing to deploy warheads. They all agree they must find the source of the problem immediately. Iron Man sees Wasp crying, and she explains how her and Havoc's daughter were taken from them by Kang in order to save the world. Iron Man silently comforts her as she grieves. Back on Genosha, Scarlet Witch has become fully controlled by Red Onslaught. With no other choice, Rogue makes direct contact with Onslaught, and she sees Xavier is still trying to hold the monster at bay. Xavier says it is all up to her now to stop the Red Skull and what he has become, but he has absolute faith in his student. He gives a small piece of himself to her so she can resist Onslaught's telepathy, and Rogue manages to free the Scarlet Witch. Wanda nearly gives up on the situation, but Rogue insists the two of them can take the Red Onslaught down. While fighting Ahab, Havoc is nearly hit by a spear, but Cyclops jumps into the way and is impaled on his arm. The Avengers and X-Men arrive in Genosha and begin to attack both the Red Onslaught and Ahab. Ahab is quickly taken down, and the X-Men agree to work together as a family on this mission. Iron Man confronts the Red Skull and says they are now immune to his telepathy, but the Red Onslaught asks why he knew how to block out his telepathic frequency to begin with, and explains he has gained all the information from Tony Stark's head, including the Civil War files which were thought to be long gone. Using this information, the Red Skull influenced Tony into building machines capable of taking down the superheroes of Earth. Onslaught then presents two adamantium Stark Sentinels, ready to kill both the Avengers and X-Men. Tony Stark sits, horrified at his actions. He realizes that he has seen this was going to happen in his nightmares. His subconscious has been screaming at him, trying to warn him about what he has done. Captain America wakes Tony up. The Stark Tech Sentinels are nearly indestructible and are teleporting heroes within their own robotic bodies to keep the Avengers and X-Men captured and out of the fight. While they try to come up with a plan, Captain America saves Iron Man but is captured. As Iron Man is targeted, he is saved at the last moment by Doctor Strange. The Avengers have been decimated and only a handful remain. Doctor Strange and Wanda agree to use their magical powers to try and invert the personalities within the Red Skull and allow Charles Xavier to take over while Magneto and Iron Man reluctantly agree to work together and distract the Sentinels. And finally, Rogue will distract the Red Onslaught himself. Iron Man explains these Sentinels were built specifically based on Civil War files and are therefore largely made to combat the heroes of Earth. Tony would never have thought he'd be working with the likes of Magneto, so they aren't prepared to resist his magnetic powers. The plan begins to unravel when Rogue frees Nova. He tries to help by attacking one of the Sentinels, but both him and Iron Man are knocked out. With the Sentinels no longer distracted, they capture both Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange, while Magneto is knocked into a building near Stark. 
Iron Man realizes that his plan has failed, and the Sentinel foot begins to crush him. As his armor begins to give way, he begs Magneto to help him. With a stony silence, Magneto dusts himself off and leaves. Tony curses the mutant while he is about to be crushed, but at last minute, Nightcrawl appears and saves the Avenger. Iron Man falls unconscious, but eventually wakes up with the surviving heroes in a shelter. Though things look grim, Tony Stark refuses to give up and inspires the heroes to take on the Red Onslaught one more time. Avengers, X-Men, and Inhumans unite into one squad, and the attack begins. Everyone strikes hard and fast, however, all but Tony Stark are quickly captured. The Red Skull mocks the fallen Avenger, and declares nobody is left to stop his onslaught. However, Magneto disagrees and returns with some unexpected reinforcements. My name is Lance Corporal Wade Wilson. Me and the men of the 356 Regiment Bareback Mounties left Sweet Mary McCracko Corn and Hoodwinkle's Ice Cream Parlor to come fight overseas in Genosa and stomp a Nazi. To give what we have to the good fight, and maybe, just maybe, make a new best friend. Deadpool drags Iron Man away from the heated battle between the team of supervillains and the Adamantium Sentinels. As Deadpool discusses the finer nuances of being plumped in with the rest of the supervillains, Iron Man demands to know where he is being taken. The villains meanwhile prove to be a strong match for the Sentinels, as they have not been built with these foes in mind. Doom and Loki look on as Carnage rips out one of the Sentinel's eyes, and the two villains proceed to thrash the Sentinel themselves. Meanwhile, Quentin Quire is one of the only telepaths left on the field, and is struggling to keep the Red Onslaught's powers at bay. Evan has nearly finished recovering from his wounds and asks Quentin to hold out a little longer. Meanwhile, Mystique manages to distract Onslaught by disguising herself as Steve Rogers. Using this time, the Enchantress is able to use a love spell on the villain and brings him to a halt. However, the spell is soon broken by one of the Sentinels, and the Spellcaster is taken down. During this time, Magneto manages to free Doctor Strange and Wanda, and they agree to try their original plan of inverting the personalities of the Red Skull and Charles Xavier. However, Quentin Quire falters and can no longer hold back the Red Onslaught's telepathic abilities. Elsewhere, Deadpool asks if Tony thinks he is Avengers material. Iron Man replies that even in circumstances like these, Deadpool would never be an Avenger as long as Tony lives, and he demands to know where he is being taken. Though Deadpool's feelings are hurt, he explains that he has taken the Avenger to be powered up. With his telepathic abilities no longer being balked, Onslaught has taken control of the supervillains just as Doctor Strange and Wanda finish their spell. Doctor Strange is knocked out and Wanda is almost taken by the Red Skull until saved last minute by Evan, Iron Man, and Deadpool. With Iron Man once again blocking out the Red Skull's telepathic abilities, Doctor Doom arrives and says he will help Wanda cast the spell. They succeed and everyone is knocked unconscious. The heroes awaken and emerge from the destroyed Sentinels. With the exception of Deadpool and Magneto, the villains have disappeared. The Red Skull is unconscious and has returned to his original state. Confused, the Avengers and X-Men quickly turn on one another. Worried that Xavier is now trapped in the Red Skull's body, the X-Men want to take him with them and care for their mentor. However, the Avengers agree that he is far too dangerous for the villain to leave S.H.I.E.L.D. custody. Evan appears and has transformed into an adult apocalypse. He says that there is nothing left of Xavier within the Nazi and that he isn't worth their time. Havoc agrees to let the villain go, but resigns from the Avengers. X-Men and Avengers depart, unified no longer. On the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier Iliad, high above the Atlantic Ocean, a meeting between S.H.I.E.L.D., Captain America, and the Hulk is taking place. The Stark Sentinels are being dismantled and the Skull's camps on Genosha have been torn down. World War Hate is over. Nick Fury congratulates Captain America for a job well done, but Maria Hill says it's time for the Avengers to hand over the Red Skull. The international community appreciates the actions of the Avengers, but nobody is comfortable with a team of heroes holding on to one of the most powerful telepaths on the planet in their custody. But Sam Wilson won't hear it. Tony Stark has found a way to keep the Skull and his powers contained, and the villain isn't going anywhere. 
Maria Hill points out that Tony Stark was the one who had built the Sentinels, and the Avenger hasn't been seen for almost two weeks. She also points out that it's not right for a private group to be holding prisoners of war. When the Hulk says that Maria might be right, Captain America quickly shoots down both of them. Nick Fury tries to defuse the situation, but Sam won't listen and quickly knocks the spy to the ground. Sam Wilson says that Fury has Sam mixed up with Steve Rogers and that he's not THAT Captain America. As he and the Hulk leave, they contact the Scarlet Witch and say that they have a situation and tells her not to mention it to Steve Rogers. Elsewhere, in Brooklyn, a hostage situation is at hand following a botched bank robbery, but it is not going well for the police. Luckily, help swings in to save the day. Carnage bursts through the window and quickly ties the hostages up. Spider-Man arrives on the scene soon after, and the police chief tells Spidey that Carnage just went into the building. Knowing Carnage's ways, Spider-Man says that everyone in there is likely dead before heading into the building himself. However, he is surprised to find that everyone is fine. The criminals are tied up, Carnage didn't take any money, and perhaps most disturbing of all, Carnage might be engaging in potential copyright infringement. We then go to the San Francisco Giant Stadium, where a game is about to begin. However, Iron Man arrives with an exciting new announcement. The people of San Francisco, and only the people of San Francisco, are about to receive an incredible new app. Using only an app on any given smartphone, the all-new extremist program will give people perfect bodies that never age. Tony picks up a glass of champagne. While everyone downloads the new app, Matt Murdock is revealed to be in the crowd. Horrified at Iron Man's actions, he wonders what Tony is doing. Tony then says it is time to get the party started, and with a small pause, drinks the champagne. Breaking his long-standing vow to never drink again, he says, I missed you too, sweetheart. We then go to the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. Storm speaks to a large audience of mutants who have come together after the events of Genosha. Charles Xavier is gone. Wolverine is dead. Their numbers dwindle, their strength is diminished, and the X-Men splinter into warring factions of children. But no more. The X-Men have at last come together under one new truth. Nature follows only one law. Survival of the fittest. The X-Men have amassed an army. The Avengers begin their meeting. Apocalypse has risen, and war with the X-Men seems all but inevitable. The mutants will come for the Red Skull. Captain America says something wonderful has happened to the Avengers on Genosha. A fog has been lifted. Their collective need to help others instead of themselves is no longer present. The others agree, and realize the best solution is to just kill a skull right here and right now and be done with it. Jarvis desperately tries to stop the Avengers and begs them not to do this, but Scarlet Witch quickly knocks the faithful butler to the ground. Hulk asks if Jarvis is okay, but the butler says he is not and begs the hero to stop his comrades. The Hulk agrees and insists that the Avengers do not kill. But when Luke Cage knocks the Hulk out of their way, it soon becomes clear that the Hulk is also affected by the inversion spell. The Green Giant quickly transforms into a being called Claw, who claims to be born of the Hulk's own innate rage instead of banners, and is thus much stronger. Kla knocks the Avengers around briefly before deciding to just leave and relish in his own destructive power in the streets of New York City. No longer in their way, the Avengers are happy to just leave him be and turn their attention back on the Red Skull. However, when they open the cell, they realize that the Red Skull has escaped. Nova and Spider-Man arrive at the Avengers Tower. A priority alert has been called and all Avengers have been asked to report in. At the meeting, many of the Avengers act their usual selves, including Spider-Man and Nova, while those who are at Genosha, like the Invisible Woman, Beast, and Vision have clearly been affected by the Inversion spell and begin to argue. Sue Storm demands to speak to Steve Rogers, but Sam Wilson arrives and says Steve is no longer in charge. Steve explains that he called a priority alert because the Red Skull has escaped. Security logs show that somebody with Avengers level access entered his cell and erased all surveillance footage, meaning that one of the Avengers has aided the villain. While the other Avengers listen in disbelief, Sue remarks that they shouldn't have come here. Sam goes on to say that there are too many Avengers to determine who is responsible, and it will be much safer to just lock them all up in Hank Pym's subatomic ant farm. Sensing the danger, 
Spider-Man grabs Nova and leaps out the window as the rest of the heroes are shrunk down to a subatomic size. Outside, Medusa manages to grab Nova, but Spider-Man is able to rescue the young hero and gets him to fly them both away from the tower as quickly as possible. However, it doesn't take long for the Avengers to find the heroes and Nova is knocked into a nearby building. Captain America attacks Spider-Man. Using his spider sense, he is able to dodge the shield and it hits Sam instead. Scarlet Witch arrives, wanting to know why Sam is taking so long, but Nova and Spider-Man have been saved by Magneto, who says he is here to help. Back at the tower, the Avengers reconvene. They begin to argue, but Scarlet Witch says this is only an alliance of convenience, and leaves the team, seeing she is now only concerned about revenge. At the Avengers Mansion, Magneto, Steve Rogers, and Steve's son, Ian, explain the situation to Spider-Man and Nova. The inversion spell has indeed turned the heroes into villains, and villains like Magneto into heroes. Steve shows the heroes that the Hulk's evil self has just begun to tear the city apart and is demanding a worthy challenge. While the others watch this, Nova arrives, having immediately flown to the scene, and is happy to answer Kla's demands. The others look on, surprised at his actions, but quickly move to give the young hero support. But before they can act, an alarm sounds at the mansion. Something is nearby, and Steve tells them to be ready for anything. Outside, a massive ship has appeared in the skies above New York City. Apocalypse has arrived. With the Avengers splintered, the X-Men have seized this opportunity to begin a strike on the remaining Avengers. Inside the tower, Falcon is draining Wasp of her body's Pime Particles. He is pleased as he views this as a peaceful way to bring order to the world. But the X-Men arrive, and Rogue thanks Sam for his help at clearing out most of the Avengers for them. Havoc sees what Sam has done to his wife, angrily attacks, while Cyclops orders Nightcrawler to find the Red Skull. When Nightcrawler discovers that the Red Skull is gone, they move on to their next plan, to kill the remaining Avengers. Sam resists Storm and Nightcrawler's attacks before he breaks his own hand trying to punch Rogue. The X-Men makes short work of Captain America, easily beating him down. However, Apocalypse stops her from killing him as the villain needs him alive. He wants Sam to deliver a message to the people of New York City. The island of Manhattan is now in the hands of the X-Men. In three hours, any human found in the city will be slaughtered. The apocalypse of the human race has begun. Apocalypse begins a broadcast to the entire world. In the last week, the X-Men have ejected countless armed forces trying to take back Manhattan. There were no casualties until now, but that is about to end. The X-Men will now outright slaughter any intruders they find. The mutant nation has been born. The mutants will no longer stand by and let humans decide their fate. The X-Men are simply taking what is rightfully theirs, and all humanity can hope for is to persuade the mutants to leave them alone. Aboard his ship, Apocalypse asks Havoc how the world is responding to his message. Many world leaders are attempting to negotiate with mutants, but Apocalypse says that for now they can simply stew in their own terror. By the time humanity will be ready to act, it will be too late for them. The mutants have begun to build a gene bomb, and it will be ready in a matter of hours. Jean Grey arrives and says there is a lone intruder outside the tower. Mystique has come so Apocalypse sends her estranged children, Rogue and Nightcrawler, to confront her. Mystique begs the former heroes to stop this madness, as they are ruining any hopes of Charles Xavier's dream one day coming true. But Rogue and Nightcrawler won't hear it and begin to viciously attack the mutant. Rogue flies Mystique high above the city and tries to drop her to her death, but Sabretooth appears and manages to catch her. They escape, and ironically, Sabretooth flees to the very same tunnels that he once slaughtered the Morlocks in years ago. Over in San Francisco, Tony is hosting a party to celebrate his now widely successful app. But Matt Murdock arrives and demands an explanation for Tony's actions. Though Tony tries to get the hero to just join the party, Matt is in no mood for games and Tony quickly loses patience with the hero. And though he is not wearing his armor, Tony has improved his own body enough that he can easily move faster and overpower Matt Murdock, who he throws off the balcony dismissively. In Latveria, Doom begins a speech. He says that he has been lying to himself about doing what is best for his country. Doom has used Latveria and exploited the nation for his own purposes. He has endangered the country and its people, 
But all this is about to change. Doctor Doom says he is flawed and imperfect, and reveals his true face to the crowd. He declares that from here on out, Latveria is to be a democracy. However, the Scarlet Witch arrives and begins to attack, seeking revenge for the years of manipulation she faced at Doctor Doom's hands. She has come to kill the ruler. But though Doom now seeks redemption, he is still willing to fight back. Scarlet Witch attacks the crowd, knowing Doom will be forced to protect them, and the monarch is soon overpowered. As she is about to kill Doctor Doom, he disappears. Quicksilver has saved the monarch at Magneto's request. However, Scarlet Witch does not take long to find them, and saying that she expected such treachery, she begins to choke her family. In Las Vegas, Thor wins yet another game of craps. However, Loki arrives and says that he thinks the casino may be letting Thor win. Loki asks where his brother got all the money anyway, and Thor points to a nearby vault he had broken into. Loki says he's not sure that this is how a casino works, but Thor is happy here and he does not want to leave. Soon Thor strikes Loki and demands to know why he has come. Loki says he is currently incapable of lying, and as much as it pains him, he's going to have to tell the truth. Loki is here to try and help his brother because he loves him. Thor has always been there to help Loki, and now Loki wants to return the favor. But Thor says his love is misplaced, and knocks his brother out of the casino. In the city streets, Loki begs for mercy from his brother, but he is saved last minute by a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Back at the Avengers Mansion, Loki demands an explanation. Spider-Man says the Avengers and X-Men have turned evil, and all the other heroes of Earth have been imprisoned. Loki asks if they are all that's left and Nomad explains that the other villains that were on Genosha were also affected by the inversion spell. Loki then asks if they are suggesting that they band together with these villains again, but Steve says that's not the case. The villains have already been gathered. Shocked, Loki says that this might be a bad idea, but Steve says that sometimes during great turmoil, the only strategy left is the one that everybody likes the least. Loki says that together they may be able to take out his drunken brother, but Sabretooth says that Thor is not the priority. He has been in the X-Men's tower and knows what they are planning. In just one hour, the X-Men are going to detonate a gene bomb that will kill every human on Earth. On board Apocalypse's ship, Havoc looks on at an imprisoned wasp. He and Wasp have been through a lot together, as husband and wife in an alternate future. He asks Cyclops if there is no way they can spare just one human, but Cyclops says that is not how the gene bomb will work. Nightcrawler appears in front of the two brothers and says the X-Men are under attack. The team of villains, who have been made heroes thanks to the spell on Genosha, have formed into a squad of Avengers and are here to save the day. Deadpool and Spider-Man are able to infiltrate Apocalypse's ship, but Apocalypse himself is not left, and Spider-Man says there's no way the two of them can take down the villain. Deadpool is much more confident though, and begins to distract Apocalypse. While he does this, Spider-Man tries to disarm the bomb, but he does not recognize the language the bomb is programmed with. Apocalypse sees this and knocks himself and the two Avengers out of the ship and onto the city streets where the battle between the villains and X-Men still rages. Nightcrawler grabs Spider-Man with his tail, teleports to a nearby alleyway, and slams him into a wall. As he threatens Spider-Man with a sword, Carnage lunges in and saves Spider-Man. Though Peter can't quite manage to say thank you, Carnage happily says that no thanks are necessary, which just confuses Spider-Man even more. Meanwhile, Sabretooth confronts the Summers brothers, but they remind Creed that up until now, the X-Men have always shown mercy to him. Now, there's no holding back, and Victor is nearly fried by Storm's lightning. As the battle rages on, Deadpool tries to broker peace. However, Apocalypse says that love is a lie, and strikes his old friend down. Elsewhere, Doctor Doom, Magneto, and Quicksilver try to hold the Scarlet Witch back. In a rage, Scarlet Witch casts a spell to strike her family down, which leaves Quicksilver incapacitated. But Magneto still stands. Shocked, Scarlet Witch realizes that Magneto is not her real father. She begins to mock Magneto for having no family, and for having been lied to for so long. But Magneto only cares about what she has done to Quicksilver. Outraged, the witch blasts Magneto with magic. 
Doctor Doom flees, but not before Scarlet Witch swears she will burn Latveria to the ground. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, Captain America arrives and demands to know what was so important that Tony made him come all the way here. Tony says the X-Men and Steve Rogers must be stopped from finding the Red Skull, and he has gathered the corrupted Avengers together to do exactly that. The Avengers unanimously agree they will be better off if the villains and X-Men are all dead. Back in New York, the battle rages on, but Deadpool has been beaten. He begs Evan to stop this madness and to let nurture beat nature, but Apocalypse says that Deadpool is deluded. He and the X-Force slaughter the former host of the Apocalypse. Deadpool says he has always believed that Evan could be a better person, but Apocalypse says that Wayne is a brain-dead fool and savagely beats the mercenary. As Deadpool cries out in pain, Apocalypse rips his head off and declares the end of humanity is nigh. 3, 2, 1. In Apocalypse's ship, Spider-Man stands as humanity's last hope. The hero is having trouble deciphering the celestial language the Gene Bomb is coded in and is about to resort to brute force when the now heroic Carnage arrives. Cletus knows there is only one thing that will hold the bomb back, and it is Carnage himself. The symbiote envelops the bomb, and Spider-Man, shocked at all this, prepares to leave. Carnage has one final request. He wants a giant statue built in his honor, made out of gold, jewels, and rhinestones. Have it draped with the Confederate flag and placed in the middle of New York City, with the song Freebird constantly playing over it. Spider-Man reluctantly agrees to this promise and flees while Carnage begins to sing Freebird, and the Gene Bomb explodes. Outside, the X-Men are confused. The Gene Bomb went off, but something is wrong. Spider-Man arrives and says that he just saw the worst person he ever knew do the noblest thing he has ever seen, and laments the loss of Carnage. But the X-Men are unfazed and knock Spider-Man down. Before they can kill him, the corrupted Avengers arrive and both teams of former heroes immediately begin to use lethal force. Thor brutally attacks Apocalypse, and also handles the Absorbing Man, Cyclops, and Havoc. Loki and Amora agree to do something heroic to stop their old enemy and share a kiss. Together these two manage to taunt Thor and pull him through to a portal on the moon. Thor swears he will kill his abomination of a brother for all of this. Meanwhile, in the Avengers Mansion, Steve Rogers and his son Ian look on at the grim situation. The loyal Avengers brother, Jarvis, arrives and says that he might know of a way to stop them. At the battle, Apocalypse easily handles the corrupted Hulk and Mystique before he is badly damaged by the Absorbing Man, who has absorbed the celestial killing properties of Thor's axe. Elsewhere, in Latveria, the Scarlet Witch is set about destroying the small country. Quicksilver and Magneto plead with her to stop, but the witch is not interested in mercy. Fortunately, Doctor Doom returns with Brother Voodoo to help. The magician's twin brother, a spirit named Daniel Drum, quickly possesses the Scarlet Witch and manages to hold her madness back. Magneto demands to know what is going on, and Doctor Doom explains that he made a Faustian pact with the demigod to resurrect Doctor Voodoo and his brother, as they were the only ones who could control the Scarlet Witch, who given the dire situation, will be needed very soon. The battle in New York City rages on, but Iron Man arrives on the scene and takes down Havoc. He explains to Sam Wilson that it's very likely that Jarvis used a cloaking device to hide the Red Skull, and they can find him in the Stark Tower where he's been the whole time. As they race off, Storm tries to stop them, and Tony stays behind while Sam Wilson goes into the tower. Inside, Sam cannot believe his eyes as he finds the elderly Steve Rogers in an armored Captain America suit with the Red Skull in tow. In the distant past, Sabretooth is attacking a man. Though he begs for his life, Victor is not one for mercy. Wolverine tells him to stop and that there is a better way through the X-Men that can bring out the good in his old enemy. But Sabretooth says there isn't any good in him, and kills the man. In the present, Steve Rogers' allies have gone mad. Old and without the super soldier serum, Rogers is no match for the new Captain America. 
But Sam Wilson realizes too late he is fighting an illusion, and that the real Steve Rogers and the now White Skull are escaping through the sewers. The Skull is devastated by his actions, and is so sorry for all he has done. But he thinks he can fix this. Outside, the Avengers prepare to round up their prisoners for their executions. But Wilson says that the Skull is escaping and planning on reverting them all, so the Avengers move to intercept him. Meanwhile, Havoc attempts to rescue his wife, but she refuses to forgive Havoc, and after discovering that he wasn't the one who deactivated the bomb, runs away from him. Apocalypse, meanwhile, lays on his knees, devastated at his loss and mournful at the potential future he was going to make for the X-Men. But Deadpool's head is somehow able to speak, and says that Evan was raised by good people. Deep down inside of Apocalypse, that good person is still in there. On the moon, Loki flees from his rampaging brother. Thor is furious and eager for revenge. Loki comes across Mjolnir, still on the moon at this time. Loki prays that the inversion spell has truly changed him, and when Thor finds Loki, he is surprised to find that his brother has indeed become worthy. Back at the Avengers Mansion, Steve and the White Skull have escaped. Rogers is badly injured, but the White Skull has memories of the man he once was and knows what kind of opponent Steve is. A man who always stands up. As they begin to plan for casting another inversion spell, the Avengers arrive. They begin a vicious attack on the few remaining heroes until Apocalypse arrives to save the day. As he holds the Avengers off, Steve and the others make it to the roof. They are almost stopped by Luke Cage, but Sabretooth and Spider-Man hold him back as the plane takes off. They nearly escape until Iron Man tears the Quinjet apart. He nearly has them, swearing he will swarm the world with his Stark Sentinels after what Apocalypse has done. However, Doctor Doom and the others arrive. They take Iron Man down and prepare for another inversion spell. Though the villains are sad to become the terrible people they once were, they are willing to make the sacrifice for the greater good. As they begin to cast the spell, Iron Man and Havoc refuse to accept going back to normal and fight back, but are successfully held off. But Iron Man was ready for this and manages to shield himself and those around him from the spell's effect. On the moon, Loki drops the hammer. The spell has worked. Back at the mansion, everyone recovers and gets their bearings. Sabretooth, Iron Man, and Havoc are the only ones who have not been restored to normal. Havoc manages to capture Janet and flees, while Stark, Doom, and the Red Skull have all disappeared. In the aftermath of the events of Axis, the world reels from near disaster. The people would have blamed the mutants and the Avengers for all of this. Before they were returned to normal, the villains prepared a tape of themselves taking responsibility for everything serving as a source of blame in order to maintain the reputation of the X-Men and the Avengers. Ian and Sam are shocked at this, but Steve says this was their idea, as they knew what true sacrifice means. Meanwhile, the rest of the hero community has been shifted. Sabretooth has accepted imprisonment as punishment for his actions over the many years. Permanently inverted, he prepares for the long and difficult road towards redemption. But he is sure he can do this, and plans to show his old enemy, that he too can find the spirit of a Wolverine. Iron Man and Havoc are also permanently inverted. Iron Man prepares for his new role in life, while Havoc reunites with his brother and the rogue X-Men. Meanwhile, Deadpool and Evan go on the run. Loki goes on to brag about his escapades with his friend, and Doctor Doom watches over his new prisoner. The Avengers Unity Squad is reformed, with Brother Voodoo and Quicksilver joining the team and the Scarlet Witch and Rogue more sure of their place here than ever before. While Peter Parker sets about the difficult task of making a giant carnage statue in the middle of Times Square. Hello and welcome to Comic Island! My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Avengers and X-Men Axis. So this was a pretty fun event. If you look at my reviews of each individual issue, you'll see that I enjoyed this series quite a bit. 
That being said, as I've had some time to think about Axis since its ending, I do recognize that it has its own problems. This is a bloated event with a lot of characters and ideas, but not a ton of time spent on each of them. It's unbalanced and a little weird to have someone like the new Captain America turn bad right away. Some of the jokes are cheesy, some of the fight scenes were too messy and hard to follow, and some of the plot points just weren't conveyed that well. Then there's that whole incident which I'm just going to refer to as a Marvel Cinematic Universe shenanigan. So Axis certainly has its weak points, and as I look back on the series, those weak points are becoming more and more obvious to me. Overall though, I did enjoy this series, particularly week to week. There is enough fun and action for me to ignore all the bad stuff and just enjoy the ride. Part of this may have to do with low expectations. I wasn't really expecting anything from this series, so the fact that I enjoyed it as much as I did really surprised me, and probably influenced me enough to be really positive when it came to my Axis company. Let me know what you think of Avengers and X-Men, Axis, in the comments section below. Also, if you want a more thorough review of Axis, along with all the tie-in material associated with the event that I managed to cover, be sure to check out our website. We have a very handy reading order list, and you can find the link in the comments section below. We also have a Facebook page where we post all our videos, news for our channel, and stuff going on in the comic book world. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.